there's a wrestling match going around. AJ Ferrari taking on Iowa Hawkeye in the 197 pounds championship match of a tournament. And it's important that you know all of these small details because the match ends, something happens. Something happens when the match ends. It's a, it's a parterre situation. AJ gets the takedown that was needed to win the match. Match ends in that position. AJ's on top. Hawkeye's on bottom. Uh, looked like, it looked like AJ was putting pressure on the guy's head, which is completely legal. Um, Hawkeye gets up. Referee's in between them. Here's there's something being said. No, nobody can confirm that or hear what was being said. And ultimately, AJ threw what is being called a punch. I'm doing my best to describe this for you because had I not given you the details, I had only given you verbiage. What, what I would have to tell you is the winning athlete threw a punch and in the history of sport, you've probably never heard of that. I mean, any sport, any way you want to do it, when there's something flagrant or there's a misconduct, such as a, a punch, it doesn't come from the winner. But in this case, the athlete who won threw a punch. The referee decided that that was illegal and disqualified him. That sounds right. There's, there's nothing to see here, right? Somebody throws a punch in any sport. It wouldn't matter if it's baseball, basketball. It wouldn't matter if it was boxing. When the match is over, if there's a punch thrown, not good. Well, timeout. Because they then brought the two athletes to the center, and they raised the Hawkeye's hand. Now, that is a problem. If you're saying that you're disqualifying Ferrari... With what authority and with what mechanism do you have the power to overturn a match if the time has expired, and it was, then whoever had the most points wins. That's the way games are played. All of them. But in this situation, because there was disqualification, they then went back and overturned the outcome of a match. I don't know of any mechanism that a referee has to revisit a match that is not under protest. Now, it might exist, and I'm not coming down on the official, but I have heard a number of people with no statute and no bylaw and no paragraph and no verbiage and no page within the rule book saying it was the proper call. How would you know? I mean, if you were a reasonable person, the very first thing you would ask is who sanctioned this? I mean, was this the National Wrestling Coaches Association, which is a made up organization? I mean, do whatever you want. It doesn't matter anyway, right? It's the world's worst ran organization. The National Wrestling Coaches Association, the world's worst ran... Are they the ones sanctioning it? Because if they are, we'll all just sit here with our mouth shut. They make stuff up every day. They made up the fact that they have authority. I mean, they make stuff up every day. Or was this the NCAA? Because the referee was wearing a shirt that said NCAA on it. But the referee at the National Wrestling Association, the coaches Association, will also wear a shirt that says NCAA. Right? I'm just sharing with you, like, if you're a reasonable person, that's the very first thing that you're going to ask. And nobody has asked it. And you have a number of people calling for A.J. Ferrari's head on a platter. Where do you come to that conclusion? How do you even come to the conclusion that Ferrari was wrong? You're saying that he threw a punch. Fair enough. I, I'm not going to get into the X's and O's of what a punch is. I, whatever. I mean, seriously, I'm, I'm not going to get into that. But, but you're now telling me that the winner was angry and threw a punch. He clearly knows the rules. He never threw this alleged punch within the time frame within the point where he needed points he went out and got points when the whole thing's done the winner is now thrown a punch according to you are you really sure that's what you saw and that is the one and only narrative that's out there and it's on videotape are you really sure that that's what you saw 
Why do you suppose he threw the punch? Much like you never asked yourself who the sanctioning body of this was, much like you never asked yourself who was the authority, you never asked yourself why he threw the punch. So why did he throw the punch? Would it matter why he threw the punch? Would it matter what the opponent did and or said? Are some things worth fighting about or aren't they? Who was in control? All of these things are very relevant. And while this, this match, and aside from this video I'm making you right now, I mean, this will be swept under the rug and long gone by Monday morning. But this could have happened in the Big Ten Finals between the two leading teams with a point separation of five and a half. This could happen in the NCAA Finals between the same two leading teams with a point separation of five and a half. If there is an athlete that is disqualified in wrestling, within a tournament, all of his points are gone. And people think that that solves the problem, but that doesn't solve the problem. That is what creates the problem. Where the disqualified athlete can lose all points scored throughout a tournament, there is no mechanism where the losing team gains points. And if you disqualify Ferrari in this situation, you're now gaining points to Iowa. If they were to win by eight or less, they get three points. If they were winning by eight or more, they get four points. If it's a technical fall, they get five. If they get a pin, they get six. If there's a disqualification, you get six. So now you haven't just taken all of Ferrari's points away. You've added points to the losing team. And if this is within the rules, fine. I, I couldn't possibly care less. What I'm sharing is the fact that none of you have asked if this is within the rules. I've had referees weigh in on this. Oh, yeah, it's a disqualification. I had one referee say that was a crime. That was a felony assault crime. Wow. Before we get to that, why don't you tell us what rule and how you're coming to the interpretation that once time has elapsed and no protest is in place, you revisited the outcome of a match? Why don't you just tell us that? Why would you bring up it's a crime and you should bring in the law and this is a felony versus a misdemeanor and who's got authority and what's the adjudication? Why would you say any of that? If you're a referee and you understand that it's open to interpretation, tell us the rule that you are interpreting. And if you say anything less, it's because you don't actually know what the rule is. You don't actually even know if it is a rule. You know, there was a punch and a punch is bad. And the person that got punched, I mean, I, I, mean, I gotta tell you, I, I, I really have because this extends in so many different areas. There was a comment made by somebody I respect tremendously, by one half of the of the greatest wrestling match that's ever taken place, an Olympic medal, somebody I really do respect. But he went as far as to say, if Iowa signs Ferrari, they lose respect within the wrestling community. Okay, so that didn't have to do with the punch because we've seen plenty of people throw punches. This had to do with Ferrari specifically. If you guys don't know who Ferrari is, Ferrari is an NCAA champion for Oklahoma State who was brought up on criminal charges those criminal charges, which turned out to be nothing more than a rumor, cost him his eligibility, cost him a year where he was on track to be the first five-time NCAA champion in the history of Earth, cost him time on his education. Oh, and by the way, you want to know what the result was? It wasn't guilty and it wasn't innocent. All charges were dropped. It was a bunch of crap. So you have a guy that was greatly punished for something that, according to the DA, he did not do. And now he wins a wrestling match and he's so angry about winning that he threw a punch. I mean, that's the way that you would like the story to be told. And then you're going to blame Iowa if they bring a guy. I mean, what, how much, what kind of pound of flesh do you want on a guy? I mean, what, what pound of flesh do you want? You think if Iowa brings him in, it makes Iowa look bad. You want to know what would look bad? If you in your room had a 22-year-old who had made history, you paid for his education, he was the first person that could actually transcend the fringe niche of which wrestling lives and the mainstream. He's the one guy in the history that could do it. You've got him. You paid for his education. You got him in the room. Nothing is stopping him, and he doesn't respect you enough to strap up. That is what will make you lose respect throughout the community. As far as the wrestling match goes, where allegedly a punch was thrown. I mean, I got to tell you, in all fairness, you're calling this a punch. Fair enough. Why was the punch thrown? When did a winner ever throw a punch? Is it the punch that got him disqualified or was it the extracurricular? Was it the extracurricular or was it something that they said in between them? It's, it's very important that we identify 
why he was disqualified. And moreover, do you have the authority to revisit the outcome of a match? Weird things happen in sport and you never know the rule until you know it. In 2004, there was twins on the Olympic team, gymnastics called the Hahn brothers. And Paul Hahn was in eighth place in the Olympic all around and he was done. He had no more apparatuses. It was over and South Korea had won. When South Korea, who had, I'm gonna make numbers up. South Korea had an 8.0. Human air put point 8.0 into the system. Everybody knew that. And that was put on TV and NBC that was covering it shows Paul Hahn and all of USA and they're a little bit dejected and talking about how America's not gonna place here and this is our great hope. Nowhere in the medal count. South Korea won. I know this says this on the scoreboard, but just ignore that. That's human air. They'll get that sorted out. Well, they did get it sorted out. They got it sorted out 44 minutes later. And 44 minutes later, the International Olympic Committee who had to step in to sort this out informed the world that you have 40 minutes to file a protest. They filed it 44 minutes after it happened. To this day, Paul Hahn, who came in eighth, is the Olympic champion. If you don't know the story of Real Buto and Ian Parker, you will find out how important it actually is to know who's in control in what time. Is it what the clock says or is it when you walk off the mat? Is it what the clock says or when you walk off the mat or is it when your whole team walks off the mat and goes to the back like they told Parker and Real Buto? It is wildly important that we get to the bottom of this and to act as though Iowa did something wrong. You want to take a pound of flesh out of a guy? You started a rumor about him. You took his opportunity to make history away. You delayed his education. Oh, by the way, it turned out he was completely innocent. Meanwhile, you got a guy in the barn that doesn't respect you enough to walk on the mat? Man, don't even start that crap.